Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And what we're gonna be doing in this video is solving this linear equation. And you can see here the variable involved is H. So we wanna uh, find out what is H equal to, i.e. what is the solution to this linear equation. So we are talking about basic algebra here, and I'm gonna walk through the solution step by step. But before I do that, I want you to go ahead and see if you can solve this thing all on your own. If you can, put your answer into the comment section. I'm gonna show you the correct answer in just one second. Then of course, I'm gonna uh, walk through the solution here one step at a time. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so again, we are dealing with a linear equation, and I'll explain what that means in just one second. Uh, but whatever you do here, even if you're not quite sure what to do, try to take at least a few steps, especially if you're uh, taking any kind of math that involves algebra, or if you're in an algebra course, maybe do what you can do, even if you can't complete the entire problem uh, in advance uh, of watching how I do it. That's generally the better approach to learning mathematics. But let's go to take a look at the solution right now to this equation. The answer is H is equal to one half. Okay, so hopefully you got that right. If that is the case, let's go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and a plus a 100% and a few stars so you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you know how to handle a linear equation in algebra. All right, so just to kind of go back up here, I am referring to this equation as a linear equation. Now, why is that? Well, generally speaking, when you have an equation, of course, this is an equation, we have an equal sign right there, and we have a variable involved. Now, this uh, variable, you can see, is all by itself, right? So we have h, 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 and h over here, but we don't have like h to the second power or the square root of h. We don't have any uh, thing like that. We just have h by itself, but really technically there's h to the first power. So anytime you just have an, a variable like say x or y by itself, typically speaking, I'm kind of you know speaking in uh, loose terms here, but generally uh, uh, speaking, um, you know, you're going to describe this type of equation as a linear equation, all right? So we have this and we have a number. So, of course, that's what this is. Now, a linear equation, graphically, you could graph uh, this. And if you kind of listen to the word a linear, the graph of this thing will be a line. All right. So just to kind of make that extra clear, because when you study mathematics and algebra, you do need to have a good understanding of the various terms and definitions and descriptions of, uh, you know, equation, equations and expressions. It is important. OK, so let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. So here is our problem. We have 7H minus 2H minus 3H minus 4H is equal to 2 times H plus 1. All right, so what do we need to do here? Well, here is a basic game plan that uh, you need to follow when you are solving equations in general. This is a little bit more specific to linear equations, but let's go ahead and just kind of review the steps here. So the first is we wanna simplify each side of the equation first. So in other words, any equation that you have, we wanna to try to get each side, the left-hand side and the right-hand side, as simple as possible. Sometimes it's already as simple as it can uh, kind of be written, but oftentimes you need to kind of simplify each respective side. So that's the first thing we're gonna, we're gonna do. The next thing we're gonna do after that is we're gonna move all of our variables over to the left-hand side and all of our number values to the right-hand side. So uh, those require uh, some specific steps, but this will be the second step. And once we get all of our variable terms uh, to the left-hand side and all of our numbers on the right-hand side, typically we're gonna end up with what we call a one-step equation. So a one-step equation would look something like this. Let's say 2x is equal to 10. To solve this equation, you literally just need to take one step, which is just to divide both sides of the equation by two, and you would solve for x. But if you notice here, we have only one variable term on the left-hand side and only one number uh, on the right-hand side. So this is what I'm talking about here. And then, of course, our last step would be to solve 
that last remaining one-step equation. Okay, now, as I kind of just described this, when you do your work, when you write out the steps in the solution, it needs to kind of tell this uh, specific story. So remember, you know, was, of course, if you are a student, you absolutely must do this, uh, you know, but you will read your own work, okay? And if you don't write things clearly and organized, you won't even know what's going on. But more but importantly, if you're turning this into a teacher, they won't know what's going on. If they can't understand kind of the story you're telling, they're not going to get full credit, even if you happen to stumble upon the correct solution. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the actual problem right now. So let's go ahead and simplify each side of this uh, of the equation. So let's take a look at the left-hand side. So we have 7h minus 2h minus 3h minus 4h. We can combine like terms, all right? We got all these h terms here. So these are what we call like terms, right? Because they all have the h variable. So let's combine them. That's what we want to do. So let's kind of do this in two steps here. I got a 7h right there, so I'll just write that. And then I got a negative 2h, negative 3h, negative 4h. So all together right here, this is negative 9h. So we have a 7h plus a negative 9h. So instead of just trying to add all these up, oftentimes it's better just to kind of, you know, do a little, you know, uh, uh, another step here so you don't, um, you know, make any errors, all right? So don't feel bad if you're like, oh, I'll just take this step and kind of whittle the problem down one more time. So we got 7h plus negative 9h is negative 2h, okay? So don't feel compelled that if you you know, or, you know, feel like you're kind of losing track of all these H's. You're like, okay, seven, two, three, four, and you got all these negative signs. Remember, this right here is positive. So this negative 2H, you can kind of think of this as plus negative 2H, plus negative 3H, plus negative 4H. So you want to add up all these negatives here. So 2 and 3, that's 5, and 4 is 9. So this is one uh, big negative 9H, and we're going to add it to this positive 7H. So again, what might seem simple here can easily be confused and, and the whole uh, kind of the name of the game in mathematics is to, you know, write clearly and stay controlled of the problem. All right, so let's take a look at the right-hand side. Here I have two times h plus one. Anytime you see a number outside of an expression like this, uh, we're talking about a distributive property, so a number outside of a sum or a difference. Uh, this is an indication that you have to do the distributive property. So that's going to be 2 times h, which is 2h, and then 2 times this one, which, of course, is 2. All right, so this is the first step. Uh, and the first step here, again, was to simplify each side of the problem. And that's what we did. So we got 7h uh, plus 9h, which, of course, is negative 2h. And then we have 2h plus 2. I can't simplify this any further on the right-hand side. So what we now uh, need to do is start working on moving all of our variables over to the left and all of our numbers over to the right. So let's just talk about the numbers real quick. So what number uh, do we have here? Well, the only number we have is two. It's on the right-hand side of the equation, so we don't have to worry about that. But we do have to move this 2h. It's on the right-hand side. We're going to have to move it over to the left-hand side and combine it with this negative 2h right here. Okay, so again, remember, that we're coming uh, from seven, this positive 7h plus this negative 9h, which is a negative 2h. So we've got 2h two, two is going on, but this one is negative, right? So you got to, you know, be very careful with these signs that you don't miss anything because it will throw your answer off 100%. Okay, so let's go ahead and move this 2h over to the left-hand side. So what we're going to do is subtract this 2h away from the right-hand side. So the way we're going to do that is just literally subtract it away. So minus 2h over here. But whatever you do on one side of the equation in algebra, you got to do the exact same thing. So we need to subtract 2h. Now you got to do the exact same thing to the other side. So you have to subtract 2h from the other side of the equation just like this. And this is exactly how you want to show it. So when um, we do this, what you want to now do is add down in a column manner. So negative 2h plus a negative 2h is negative 4h positive 2h minus 2h is 0, okay? So again, uh, those h's go away on the right-hand side, and then 2 plus nothing is just 2. So we're left with negative 4h is equal to 2, and this is where we kind of want to go. We have all the variable terms now on the left-hand side, and all of our numbers, or number, 
on the right hand side. So this is literally a one step equation at this point in the problem. So let's go ahead and solve that one step equation. So the only step we need to take is literally divide both sides of the equation by negative four, which is the coefficient of this variable term right here, negative four h. So divide both sides of the equation by negative four and you end up with h is equal to two over negative four. Now, a lot of students confuse this, all right? So two fourths is the same thing as, a, as the fraction one half, but you can see here, we're dividing by negative four. So a lot of students um, will put that negative sign uh, with that too, and that makes sense. But I want to just be clear here that negative one half is equal to negative one over a positive two, which is the same thing as one over a negative two. A positive divided by a negative or a negative divided by a positive, all this right here is still negative. So the most appropriate way is just to put that negative sign in front of that fraction. So we can write it just like this. H is equal to negative one half. So uh, you don't get um, caught up where this negative sign is. It's a common question. That's why I kind of bring this up and always reduce your fractions. So there you go. H is equal to negative one half. And hopefully now you understand this. Remember, okay, just because you can do a prom doesn't mean that you're doing it um, the best way if you can't see what's going on, especially if, you know, a teacher can't read all the steps. So don't skip steps. Be neat, be uh, organized, double check as you go. And this is really going to help you be successful with solving linear equations. Now, if you need uh, more help in, uh, linear with linear equations, I have additional videos on my YouTube channel in this particular topic. But I'm going to highly recommend like my pre-algebra or algebra one course so you can get my full best instruction on this topic. But hopefully this little video helped you out. If that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.